but you actually have known each other a very long time, right? Yeah. Yes. So can you, can you talk about your <laughs> share, can you talk about your shared history and when you first met? Well, now let's see. Well, I saw you in the Great Mac Daddy. Ooh, child. <laughs> <laughs> You weren't even born. <laughs> At the Negro Ensemble Company, yes, I did. You were fantastic. <laughs> you, she was so fantastic. You were hoofing and everything, honey. Yeah. And you, were, no. you, had to, you had to do that. And, <laughs> you had to do that. And then we shared at different times, but we shared the same acting teacher. Yes, Vera Katz. Vera Katz. Mm. And that's how she came to my attention, because um, Vera Katz is totally committed to all of her students, but she really latches onto the very special ones. And she would talk to me about this young student who had come, and she was just, we have to watch out for her because just, oh, she's just, you wait, just you wait. You didn't have to wait long. <laughs> <laughs> it up. seemed like it was forever. No, darling, we looked up and there she was being Josephine Baker, <laughs> riding on a yeah, yeah. <laughs> But don't you find that, that, that there's so much time in between things and people think, oh, you get discovered then when well, we've been auditioning and going <laughs> and doing for But right? that's okay, that's okay. Don't tell that part. No, that's the best. Oh, we're having the, the. Okay, we're not doing backstory today. <laughs> we can tell that part. No, because that's part of that's part of the well, craft. It's... That's part of what we do. That's part of what develops us as artists yes. and human beings. I mean, you got to go through that. I know? guess so. So everybody, you know, remembered it. it was, really noticed me and Josephine Baker, but oh, there was yes. you How know, could you not notice you? There was <laughs> Doctor Detroit. I was so happy to tell my, tell my mother, so, I got my first movie, Mom. They said, she said, oh, baby, I'm so happy. Because we know Southern. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we said, yeah. She said, I'm so happy. What are you doing? Something interesting. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> yes. But she was glamorous and fabulous, and it was all fun. It was frothy, you know, right? Right. So, but you know, there's that, and then, you know, the Silverado things and all that. But Josephine Baker was the one that, really like platform me somewhere. I was so relieved. What do you get out of these characters? Both, I mean, Linda, you've been playing Lady May for four seasons now. Mm -hmm. what, what do you get out of playing her? How do you What do her? I get out? I don't know if it was, it was very satisfying. Uh, satisfying to me because I don't think that the, this particular African-American woman has been seen um, on television before. Yeah. So it was a great honor for me to be given this. But when, when I got, when, when, when Oprah, only Oprah wanted only me. I'm sure she only wanted you. Well, that was a thank you, Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was written as, Ooh, the matriarch, and uh, she was just, I just saw really bad shoes <laughs> and a really <laughs> awkward length skirt. And I said, oh, no. <laughs> no, because I was raised by Southern women, and they are fly. Are they fly? Very fly. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's true. All right. You know, they, these women who take charge, Looking at many of them in front of me now, not Southern, but women, you know, powerful black women who will not let anybody come in and just shake up their apple cart okay. without dealing with it, you know? <laughs> Much like a queen <laughs> with a kingdom, right? <laughs> so, so I just, I just love <laughs> what? what? <laughs> keep going, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> but I just loved bring, bringing, you know, like it's a, really, it's a little bit of a disruptive thing, you know, it's a disruptor. Lady May's a disrupt because you just haven't seen her. And I just love her. And I know women like that. I was raised by women, but you know, not as, but they didn't take too much stuff. Yeah. Okay, so yes, it's been great. So what I get out of it is the being able to glorify and honor many women that I know in the world who have not had a voice on American television. Yeah. Okay. So Felicia, when Dr. W.T. is looking out at that sea of young faces, 
what, what is she thinking and what is, what is she trying to do for these children? You touched on it a little bit, but specifically in this scene, and with David, I mean, he, that's, he's the focal of the series. Um, <clears throat> she teaches a very special class. She combines history with literature and anthropology. Mm -hmm. And she's always devising assignments to make them think past a textbook. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because she's interested in doing what education is supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And I, I asked you this when we did our interview for the magazine. When she says, don't waste our time, that's not just a reprimand. No, she's serious about that. Yeah. <laughs> But to, I know that was dialogue that Terrell had written for the script, but can you talk about just that line and what that don't actually waste, means? Don't waste, we don't, I don't waste your time, don't waste mine. Yeah. Her time mm -hmm. is valuable. You know, I, just like I said, she could be anywhere. Mm. She could be in any great institution of higher learning. She has made the decision, she has made the conscious decision to be where she is. And time is of the essence because the class only lasts one hour. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's a little bit of time to learn a lot. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And as their episodes were a lot, I've seen several of them. Um, she really does connect with David in an interesting way. She really kind of focuses her attention on him for, I think, a specific reason. Can you talk about why she really zeroes in on yeah. this one youngster? She sees him. She sees his intellect. It's bright. She mm -hmm. sees it. And she knows that he is challenged by a few things. And she doesn't understand, she doesn't understand the breadth of that challenge, the full scope of that challenge. She doesn't understand every little minute thing that goes on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But she is aware, she is a socially conscious woman. She knows where he comes from. Mm -hmm. And she knows that she's the gatekeeper. Mm -hmm. She can open a path for him. Mm -hmm. And she's determined to do that. Yeah. She does not want to lose him. She sees the light, mm -hmm. and she wants it to shine. Mm 